Welcome back, game developer hobbyists! In the last episode, we got the snake moving on the playing field. Now we're going to complete the most basic version of our snake clone, getting the snake eating apples and growing. The first step will involve spawning an apple in a random location on the playing field. To achieve this, we'll add several new internal variables on the Quick Game class. The first is a random number generator. We'll also need a flag to indicate whether an apple exists on the playing field and the position of the apple. In the Quick Game constructor, these are initialized accordingly. In the update method, first take note that the update result now includes another flag indicating whether the snake has eaten an apple. We'll also check if an apple exists. If it doesn't, we set it to a random position and change the apple exists flag to true. When moving the snake forward, we also check to see if the snake's head occupies the same position as the apple. If it does, we indicate as such in the result, and change the apple exists flag back to false. The resolve new apple position method picks any random position on the playing field. If, however, the random position is already occupied by the snake, we try to find another position for it. In the snake class, we've added method occupies position to perform this check. This simply brute force tests every body segment's position. The only other change we'll need is to draw the apple in the quick game renderer. The new render apple method checks if the apple exists, and if so, draws it. And here's what this looks like. A single apple now spawns, and respawns when the snake runs into it. The next task is to make the snake grow when it eats the apples. To accommodate this, we've added an internal variable on the Quick Game class named Cued Snake Growth. When moving the snake forward in the update method, we must now check if the Cued Snake Growth variable is greater than zero. If it is, we instead call the snake's grow forward method, reduce the cued snake growth, and indicate in the result that growth occurred. When the snake eats an apple, we also increase the cued snake growth by two. It was at this point that I discovered the bug in the snake's grow forward method that I mentioned in the previous video. It only occurs when the snake is growing, and the extra body segment being added is on a bend. The position should actually be based on the last body segment's enter direction not its exit direction. Ideally, we would be writing automated tests to catch these sort of things. As I was the only developer, and this is a fairly small project, I chose to address this by adding an assert contiguous method that tests if the snake's body segments are all within one tile of each other in the correct direction. With the snake now growing properly, the next task was to update the snake length and longest snake when the player eats apples. To achieve this, we've added two new internal variables on the Quick Game Controller class. When we've detected that the snake hit a barrier in the update method, we check if the player achieved the longest snake. If they did, we set the longest snake length and last game beat longest snake length variables. In the Quick Game Renderer, the render score UI method has been updated to accept a render state parameter where it can access the snake's current length and the longest snake. I also added a new Quick Game mode to display a summary when the game is done. The Quick Game Renderer's new Render Game Done Summary method checks if the player achieved the longest snake. If they did, it calls the new Render Longest Snake UI method, which displays a special congratulations message. The message is flanked by an apple sprite, just for fun. And now the player has a goal for each new game, to achieve the longest snake. No game would be complete without music and sound, so the next task was to find some music appropriate for our snake game. For this, I made my way over to Incompetech.com and listened to a whole lot of music, particularly in the African genre. I made a bundle of notes on what I liked, and ultimately chose a piece titled Whimsy Groove for gameplay, and a second piece titled Anglo Zulu when the player achieves the longest snake. To get the music playing, we've added a number of new internal variables to the Quick Game Controller class. Each music piece has its own pair of variables, a pointer to an SFML music object, and a flag indicating whether it has been loaded. I'm actually not sure this is at all the best approach, but my thinking was that I wanted to be able to free any memory used by the audio files when the music is not actually in use. In the constructor, these are initialized to a null pointer and false, respectively. Each music piece has its own set of private methods. The ensure music loaded methods are used to initialize the music variables. The free music methods are used to stop that music piece and free the music variables. 
The begin music methods are used to start playing a music piece. These methods first ensure all other music pieces have stopped playing. Anywhere in the Quick Game Controller class where there is a transition between the Waiting to Start, Game Running, and Game Done Summary modes, we call the appropriate methods to switch between music pieces. Revisiting this after all these months, I definitely feel like this was implemented in a fairly messy way, but it did ultimately achieve what I wanted. With the music in place, the next task involved adding in two simple sound effects. A crashing noise when the snake hits a barrier, and an eating noise when the snake eats an apple. The crashing noise I found over on zapsplat.com, a stick hitting a bush. And the eating noise was just me making a mouth sound. ASM artist confirmed. For the sound effects, we've added some more internal variables to the Quick Game Controller class. Each sound has a sound buffer pointer and a sound object. These are all initialized in the constructor. In the update method, we simply check the Quick Game's update result to determine when to play each sound. And here we have it. Music playing in the background and the snake noisily eating his apples until he crashes into a barrier. In the next episode, we'll give the game some additional variety by adding in menu options for snake speed, field size, and growth rate.